beautiful day. If we were back in studio, we'd be working on our numinal project, which is we're gonna combine two or more animals together to make a new animal. Um, so we're gonna do a tutorial on that. This one I'm doing here, uh, so we could either combine different parts of animals together, or we could also take uh, a detail, like say a zebra scan, and apply it to another animal like this rhinoceros here. So we're gonna walk through doing that today, and this is gonna be uh, a two or three part, depending how fast we go through it here. Um, so first, I went in here and I got a couple pictures. I wanna talk about the pictures I chose, first of all, just as, you know, why I chose them. So I've got uh, a rhinoceros here, white knot rhinoceros, and I've got a zebra here. Okay, I chose them. If you look, they have a similar pose here. So that is going to make it a little easier on our, us to put them together. So that is why I've chosen these two pictures here in particular. Okay, so the first thing I did was went and grabbed my rhino photo and I brought it into my new image here. So that's pretty straightforward there. So I'm not going to go over top of that. Just select command, copy, command, paste. All right, so we got that in there. So over here on my zebra, I need to select him out because we want to select him and paste him on top. But I don't need all the background images behind here, okay? So what we can do, we can go in here with the auto selection tool. We can just go up here where it says select subject and we get a pretty good rendition that goes around here. That down here on the bottom, down his legs, he starts to get a little lost. So we're gonna go in here. So. What I like to do is on this, I'm going to use select and mask just because it'll put a mask on here and I can use the painting tool just like if it's doing a mask. And then I can just change the output down here from a layer mask to a selection so that when I get done doing this, just like we were doing a layer mask, I can output it to a selection and have that red background. It helps me see where my uh, selection is actually going to be. So I'm going to go in here and I am going to zoom in. I'm going to get down here on the legs and I'm just going to go ahead and use the paintbrush tool here and paint in some areas that we don't need. Make this kind of smaller here and we're just going to paint this right here. Get my auto selection tool here. some of this here, clean that up. A little too much there, so we'll go back here, get my paint tool option. Well, I need to be fairly accurate on this. So I'm going to take my time, go through here and select this all out until I have a nice Fairly good selection here. Now the hooves, we don't need quite so much. And I'll explain that later when we get to it. But we gotta get all of this extraneous background shadow out. Let's zip around here real quick and look. Pretty good up here. Looks pretty good around the hair. And everything's looking pretty good here. We're a little sloppy around the tail there, but we're not gonna use most of the tail, so that's gonna work for us. All right, so I zoom back out here. I push okay, and again, that's gonna output to a selection here. So now we have our zebra. We can Command C, copy him. We're gonna go to our new document. We're gonna push Command V. And we've got our zebra in here. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to size this guy up here so that he is going to be approximately the same size as our animal over here. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to store a little bit here. All right, so just getting approximate here. Not 
that body. His legs are also obviously thinner and longer than our legs are on our rhinoceros, but that's okay. We're just looking for the pattern to fit over top of so That's what we're going to work with here. Okay, so we'll kind of set that over top of here. Okay, now we can go in and one thing that we can do is go up here and we'll commit this here. We'll go ahead and commit that. So, and we're going to turn down the opacity over here to about, I don't know, about 58% sounds good. We're going to go up here to edit. And we can warp, okay? So if we go over here to transform, there's a few different warps we can do. Warp meaning pushing and pulling. So we can do scale, rotate, skew. Uh, let's do just straight up a warp here. And what that does, when you see that I can go in here and I can push things around, but it does affect the entire image, okay? So I can kind of pull this guy in here, but you see the legs move and the back moves and it kind of pulls the whole animal as I'm going and pushing these parts around, right? So that starts to get us into a place, but you'll see that it is just really difficult to get it to move around. That puts us in a better place, but still not exactly the way we want to be here. Okay, so we can get roughed in here a little bit more with this. And we're starting to get some of that shape of that ammo, but some of these big parts like moving this leg over here like that, when we do that, everything we got over here gets train wrecked. So let's go ahead and we'll commit that where that sits. And we'll try a new tool, okay? We're gonna go over here to the filter tool and we're gonna go to this liquify tool, okay? It's going to bring up a whole nother screen here. All right, probably just turn off the background here for a second. So here's our crazy looking zebra right now. And remember, we're not so much copying the zebra as the shape of the zebra's coat, okay, the pattern. So the way he looks is going to be okay. I'm going to have to cancel out of here real quick. Going back in there, I got bug in there. Let's go liquefy again. I don't know why I'm getting this. We'll work with that for right now. Let's get over here and look at the face. So with the liquify tool, what it does, we've got some tools over here we'll talk about, and we've got some options over here we'll talk about. All right, first off, right up here on the top here, the forward warp tool, okay? It's basically you got a little finger pushing things. So if I go in here, and let's make this nice and big, and I usually work pretty big when I'm working with this, and I will push this around, and you'll see it doesn't take the whole animal. It takes whatever part is in that circle and moves it around. So I can go in and start to get a little bit more fine-tuned with just that tool there where I can go and find the edge of that animal by using the push and pull tool of the warp tool. And obviously this can be a little tedious here, so we'll move along. But I start to push that animal into position here. I get real big here on this shoulder blade here. And bring that in, because what I'm gonna do is try to bring this leg here over to this area. And you'll notice there is a ghost image underneath of where your animal started at. So every once in a while, because I have this ghost image of where it was at, I have to push OK to see where I'm at. Okay. And I can turn off my animal, pop him back on to see how I'm doing here. Okay? So, 
this area back here is starting to come together pretty good. I still got to push that down a little bit. But obviously there's some pushing and pulling to be done here. And obviously the legs anatomically of the zebra are long and thin and the legs of the rhino are short and stubby. So I have to account for that. So since I just need the pattern, I'll probably just cut off the extra that I want, don't need of the zebra's legs. Okay, so moving forward, I'm gonna just keep going back and forth in my liquify tool here. So I'll go back to filter and go to liquify again here. Okay, let's talk about some other tools here. I lost this reconstruction tool. So if I go over here and I do this, the reconstruction tool is like command Z, it starts to undo bit by bit what you did. So if I come over here and just keep kind of scrubbing back where it was at, it's eventually going to take it back where it was when it started. Okay? So. The other tool here, right here, is the smooth tool. That's going to smooth edges as I go through here. It's also a refining tool. I have this twirl clockwise tool, which I have really no idea what you would use this for, but here's what it does. The longer I hold it, it just starts to twist it around there. So it could get some cool effects, but not really useful for anything I would say is practical here. I also have these two tools here that work in together. One is the squeeze tool, pucker tool. So if I go in here, it brings things into the center of the circle. And if I go over and grab the other tool here, it makes things expand outward to the outside of this figure. It's just bloating them out. Okay, so that's what those two tools do. And then I also have this tool right here, push left and push right. So once I get pretty big here, as I roll this down, it pushes images left and right. And I can push option and go the other way depending on where I go and it goes with my downward stroke as I go and you can see the further I go down the harder it makes that left hand turn then right here we have a freeze tool let's go ahead and undo our tools here we're gonna go here we have the freeze tool and what that's going to do once I get something in place here like let's say I get this face here and I like the eye right where it's at here I paint that over there and now when I go over with another tool like my push and pull tool it won't affect that area see I'm going everywhere and it's affecting everywhere but that area so that's what that's for and there's also the freeze tool and then there's obviously the unfreeze tool and this works just like a layer mask where I can start to take away that area okay then I've got my hand tool for moving my place around move my image in and then I've got my zoom tool obviously to zoom in and option zoom out on the areas that I'm working on over here Anytime we see that circular dab, we know Photoshop is working with a brush, which we can use these sliders over here, density, pressure, rate, and then I can also just use my bracket tools on my keyboard to quickly go up and down. Here's some face recognition software here for if we had a face we were working with, which we're not quite doing a human face, so it's not going to recognize that. Some load mesh options, which are some different warp options, some mask options. Um, but what we're really concerned with right here is the mask showing the background and you can change the opacity of that background if you want to see more or less of it and that is pretty much all we're going to be concerned with on this so i'm going to push okay there and i'm going to stop right there and we're going to stop our video here and i'm going to keep working on this and we'll pick up this tomorrow and continue with it till then have a good day and stay creative